Greetings girl people and welcome back to my channel. Today is a very special day because we're going to be having an exciting, uh, thought-provoking conversation. I'm with some amazing guests here. Today I'm hosting a show. Uh, well, I'm in Barbados and a lot of you probably think uh, of just crop over, of course, the beautiful place the sun, the beach, but there's actually more to Barbados. There's a lot of culture. So today we're going to be having a conversation around culture. But first, let me introduce my guests. All right. So I'm John King, uh, former Minister of Culture. Sharon Johnson. I'm the Senior Cultural Policy Officer in the Division of Culture Barbados. I'm Rodney Grant, Program Advisor in the Office for Reparations and Economic Enfranchisement. All right, so uh, we're first going to start by having a conversation of like a simple thing. What is culture? Like how do you define culture? All right, so culture is everything, everything that reflects us as a people. Culture is the, the way we live, the way things we eat, the language we speak, our clothing, uh, reflects rituals of burning, of burial, of harvest, of reaping, um, it respect, it, it, you know, it reflects everything that that really forms the essence of a, of a nation of a people. And you know, culture could be a very a very individualistic thing, but it could also be a communal. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, and, and ancestrally, it was communal, but you know, it also means something to the individual, like rites of passage. So culture is all those things. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Anything you want to add? I'd also say that it's also a very good way of marking an individual, telling you about who they are yeah. as a group yeah. and also as the individual yeah. within the group. Yeah. You know, because even though the groups have culture, you could begin to break them down even into family culture, into the area within you live that has its own little culture so it's very dynamic it's not static at all but it is really a marker of who you are i i i agree with what my colleagues have said and it's a good segue into heritage um you know culture um it defines who we are as a people but then it also denotes um what our heritage is what has been passed down by our forefathers defines who we are as a people what separates us from who we are even within the caribbean what defines us from Trinidad uh, from trinidadians yeah, Guyanese. and Guyanese, as mm -hmm. he said defines us from being a barbadian from being a, a, a jamaican mm -hmm. so it defines us as, uh, yeah. you know. yeah. all right all right well i understand that uh, there's a lot of similarity in terms of culture between uh i mean the region mm -hmm. as well as the continent of africa so how can we define the culture of barbados like when some people might have this mindset they feel like a lot of people who are taken from africa maybe they don't have a culture you know there's some people who think like, oh, those people don't have a culture. I've seen such conversations online. Mm -hmm. So would you tell us about the culture of Barbados? It would be, it would be short-sighted for anyone to say that any people do not have a culture. Because it's, it's innate. You will have a culture. <laughs> you cannot ever not have a culture. Mm -hmm. It will be different to what you may consider to be a culture. But there's no way on the earth mm -hmm. that a human being <laughs> cannot have a culture. Because culture comes from the human being. These are the things that you create, the ways of life, the way, like, as was mentioned earlier, the norms, what we consider to be the norms within your group. That forms the culture which is passed on from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And it does not mean because we were taken away from Africa that we left everything behind and for uh, because there are some remnants of things that have remained with us the way we dance 
Thurman? It might not be the same as, let's say, in Ghana or any of the West Coast uh, places where we came from, but you can see remnants, okay. similarities of these things. So, for instance, there's a there's a there's a glaring, um, I should say, similarity between what we call the landship in Barbados and its I would I would refer to it as its cousin or or, or thing on the continent where you have the maypole and you have people dancing and this sort of stuff. So you can see it, even when we talk, even in some of our language, right? So very early, when I was a child, I would hear my my grandmother say things like this. I yam my, I yam my food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yam. Yam, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that was, that was, because we were under British rule, that would have been seen as what is called dialect or not English. Mm -hmm. We were not supposed to say that. But that is remnants of our African word for eating, which mm -hmm. is to yam. But we put to yam <laughs> because it's a mixture of English and whatever. I will yam my food, right? So when you begin to study the language itself, even some of the things are, are how we put things together, if you go to Trinidad, you hear Trinidad, they say all year. If you come to Barbados, you hear Barbados say wanna. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the annunciation in these things are remnants of that old African language mixed with what we understand to be English. And even in that itself creates its own culture. Because there's a rhythm to certain things, there's a there's a sound, even when it's made with certain with certain words, that you automatically, if you're a Barbadian, you you feel it, right? So the words that we that we use that are so peculiar to Barbados, even in terms of bad language, which we will not use in this, uh, in yeah. this <laughs> but if you are in Barbados and you and you hear this particular word, you will know that either those persons are really really angry, <laughs> you know. Or they're really, really excited about yes. something, yeah. and it interchanges based on the to the, the, the tone of that yes. word, yes. <laughs> you know. And that in itself <laughs> is part of barbarian culture. Yes. Sometimes some people say that uh, maybe as the people are being taken from Africa to this region, mm -hmm. uh, you are uh, the culture was stripped, like they were stripped of their culture so that's why sometimes you get to hear phrases like oh they they lost their culture so they have no culture and things like that mm -hmm. yeah so how how much of it do you feel like do you feel like some part of it was actually stripped and there's some new ones that you created for yourselves you wanna let you handle well yeah some parts of it definitely we were stripped of some parts of our culture um, and, and we feel it. Honestly, we, we feel it. But as, as John, was said, John said, we didn't lose everything coming across, across the Atlantic. And, and some aspects of it, when we look to our architecture, for instance, you can see some remnants of our culture that were fused with the European architecture. Mm -hmm. And we call, we, we call that that creolized culture. And we go, we, you look at our architecture, Obviously, the Europeans did not know how to build for temperate climate, and that you, you see it in our, our um, vernacular architecture, how the architecture would have been influenced by the Africans, and that is there. Even how we treated our, our, um, our families, family structure, that is, that, is, that is there, and as well, the, the family structure, the going to the going to, to church, all of those things are still embedded within our society. But there are certain elements within our 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 um, structure that we've lost, and we we are we are still trying to retain those elements. But then also you look within our um, our cultural cultural norms, the dance elements. And you look within, um, and Rodney can speak to these. Our cultural, um, um, 
dance forms, dance in Africa, these, these, the, our community groups, such as dance, dance in Africa, we have Hainesville dance groups. These are still very much part of the, the, um, the, the elements that we have that are still very much there. And these are things that we are very much within our, our ministry that we are, we definitely try very hard as part of our programming to get back within our schools, within our communities, that we are we a part of our programming. And I will hand over to Rodney as part of the work that he's doing in the reparations and within the pilots community that they, we are trying very much to, to, to grab hold of and successfully so. So if we just stay with the with the dance for a bit, mm -hmm. so so a lot of the masquerade, maybe into Kaduma now crop mm -hmm. over. So when you look at things like the Monka Jambi, it's very African, representing that ancestral spirit. Um, the shaggy beard, all of these were elements of masquerade that came out of African culture. Um, and a lot of them represented that spiritual element and that ancestral element of the African. And then, even in terms of the dance, or right across the Caribbean. So, even what we would have lost, what we did was recreate. In terms of, there are a lot of fusions now, in terms of the French, the English, and the Spanish colonizers. So you will have particularly a lot of dances now that what we call the quadrilles. And quadrilles, or the quadrilles became very common mm -hmm. across the region, mainly because of that English and French fusion how the, the enslaved were able to watch the, the slave masters and take what they had as the waltz and they fuse it with the African 6-8 rhythm, what we call the 6-8 pattern, and they create a new form of quadrille. So you have a lot of things like the PKs and the bellies and the stuff that we, we were able to keep. Um, even in terms of our wakes, right now we are doing a production looking at the traditional wakes and how you celebrate, how you deal with death and help that spirit to, to move on and that night-night procession that persons used to, to, to look at. And the dances that, they, that are used traditionally, the bongo and the, and the limbo, what we know is the limbo that we just use now in a very deodorized way in some forms, in the, in just in the hotel commercial, in the commercial sector. These were used um, symbolically in terms of how we treat to death, and how, how that spirit move on and how the spirit was elevated. And these are things we kept. So we kept a lot, and what we did, we fused a lot as well. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, because coming into the Caribbean, the process of enslavement, we created a new culture. We created a whole new culture um, that is now ours, um, and now ours to celebrate. And, 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 and it is rich. So now, right across the region, I mean, you have a rich uh, celebration of culture based on African retentions mm -hmm. and African fusions in terms of the French and the English and the Spanish. Um, so that, that, that is one side, and, and, and we can't get away from that. And then we will look at things like the food, the cuckoo, which is alhadi, alhadi. It's very, very Ghanaian. And people will tell you, particularly, because I think we would have made... Um, you know, they have a lot of the, the enslaved coming from a lot of parts of Africa, but I think we had primarily from Ghana. People will tell you from Barbados, if you go to Ghana and you talk, you feel, you know, you listen to Ghanaians talk, you think you're in Barbados. You know, I always say, I just say, he went, no, no, he is bad, he said, done, done. And he had a lot wrong. So he thought he was in, in Bridgetown, you know. So <laughs> Ghana, Barbados have that close connection. So we retain the food. A lot of the food, particularly around the cocoa and the okra mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, and the old time uh, thing that you used to eat with the cocoa, the red thing, red herring. Red herring. Mm -hmm. you know, traditional African dishes. Um, so the things that you read. And, and you know, in terms of culture, culture the thing that renews itself. Mm -hmm. You know, so so there's nothing wrong. As John said, it would be it, it would be madness to say that a person or people don't have a culture, culture yeah. mm -hmm. because what you lost you regain mm -hmm. by fusions mm -hmm. and, and immersing in terms of this this new environment because culture is 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 influenced too by environment. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So we're in this new environment. Mm -hmm. So we recreate based on the environment we are now in. It's like almost like a chameleon thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we create the culture based on this new environment that was surrounded by white, English, French, and Spanish, and sugarcane plantations, and sea, and sun, and whatever else that we had. We recreate the culture based on this new environment. And this is now what we have. Yeah. And what is really instructive, and again, because we are in the season of emancipation, is that our celebration, and this is why we, we, within the division, we emphasize that the Quapova is part of the season of emancipation. Because it was this time that you know that 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 the enslaved reflected and celebrated, and even at that point in 1838, um, there was celebration, and there was celebration in an African way, celebration in a way that reflected that culture in terms of when they, you know, when that freedom came, you know, there, there was celebration, and therefore the celebration of Kaduma falls within the concept of that freedom, that concept of emancipation. So. This is really an important time for us um, to be able to be reflective, to reflect on who we are as a people, what we have as a people, and to remember that at the core of it all, it is it boils back down to who we are. You know that celebration of identity, uh, and 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 John was making the point: culture is like a stamp. It, it's Barbadian. It, it, it stamps you when you go somewhere. You hear like hear some person speak, yeah. and you yeah. see them that's walk a particular way. You say that's a Bajan. Yeah. Yeah. When you, Trinidad is the same way. When you hear them open the mouth, you see them behave. You say that's a Trini. Mm -hmm. Same way for Jamaicans. So culture is almost like a stamp of you. Don't need a passport if you have a culture. Mm -hmm. That's your identity. That's your stamp. And I must say mm -hmm. something. Um, this the more a season of emancipation. There's no other country in the world that has a season of emancipation. It's true. Barbados yeah. has the only season it's of true. emancipation. And it's, <clears throat> it's unique to us. Yeah. And what we have done with this season of emancipation, I think Barbados has placed itself on the map with the season of emancipation. And what have we done with the season of emancipation? We have opened ourselves to the African continent. This season of emancipation was unique to us this year in that what, what have we done? We have brought 500 persons of Bajan descent from Liberia That's right. back yeah. home yeah. to us this year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was yeah. phenomenal. We were trying to get you back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we were trying to get you back. What happened? What happened? She couldn't get back. She couldn't get back. But uh, you know that that was phenomenal. During the season of emancipation, we brought them back. So that that was that was one of the biggest things for us during the season of emancipation this year. So um, yeah. So yeah. I I would like to add to to what Sean has just said about mm -hmm. season of emancipation. Yeah. Because within the season of emancipation, it doesn't only reflect on emancipating ourselves from chattel slavery. Mm -hmm. But it also encourages people to emancipate themselves from mental slavery. Yeah. And you will notice, and it sometimes goes under the radar, but a lot of people in terms of their spirituality and religious understanding are emancipating themselves from what was given to us or forced upon us as to how we should approach our own spirituality. Yeah. And a lot of, and, and believe you me, it is probably one of the most liberating things when a person or a group can come to the understanding that no other person can direct you as to how you interact with your faith or your spirituality or your whatever words we want to use and we encourage people to emancipate themselves from the things that don't serve them well as the individual <laughs> or as the community you know so when Rodney was speaking earlier about the Caribbean itself and, and Barbados part of that Caribbean wanted to be a zone of peace it is important that your spirituality be linked to that, your identity be linked to that, your culture be linked to that, so that then it becomes the norm 
for you to be peaceful, for you to be able to, to, to have differences without taking up guns and all of these kinds of things. And our culture, because that is, that is basically who we were, now is under threat. And it's under threat with the advent of us being able to have a lot more, I think one of our Calypsonians used this term many years ago, it's called cultural penetration. Mm -hmm. Through movies, access to more, uh, let me see things on social media, which technology, we, technology itself, you know, and in a way, although people might see this as a, as a very negative thing, it gives us an opportunity as a people and as a region to really stamp to the rest of the world who we really are. Correct. By rejecting a lot of that stuff that is being thrown at us. You know, and, and, and in some quarters, in some quarters, we believe that this is not necessarily by accident. Hmm. But because you have these types of areas where we where we are that have been We've been through, as Rodney and both of we've been through slavery. We've been through colonialism. Mm -hmm. We've been through economic disenfranchisement. Mm -hmm. But we're still here. Exactly. We're still here. Mm -hmm. We're still here. It's a resilience. Yes. You know? And, and I can tell you from my own experience, in landing on the continent for the very first time in 2020, I felt as if I had finally filled a piece of my life that was always missing, came full circle. And this is where, as you mentioned, um, the culture and these kind of things have become very important in bringing the diaspora and the continent together. Because all of us have grown up in environments that tell us that there's strength in numbers. And so we must therefore not only give it in talk, but yeah. we must put it into practice. Yeah, in action. That there's strength in yeah. us coming together. Nice coming together. At numbers. Yeah. So we'll get back to that, but there's a question, there's something he mentioned. I, I'll go back to that first. You mentioned uh, about crop over. I, I, would, I know a lot of people when they think of crop over all they think about is like you know the masquerade, the yes. parade and all that yes. and people think it's just a carnival celebration, drinking, partying, having yeah. fun on the road and that's it. A lot yes. of people really don't understand uh, what crop over is. So maybe what's crop over? First of all, yeah. it's not a carnival. It's a festival. Okay. It's as I always tell people it is more than a, there was a slogan some years ago, more than a carnival. More than a carnival. Okay. The reason for that, I, I think there were, there were some time, I, I, I usually tell people it's almost like 30 something events in Krakowa. You, you get pan events, visual art events, culinary events, competitions, visual arts events, a whole, a whole slew of events some events at one point in time we had gospel events mm -hmm. all type of events that people can can wander through family events all type of events you can you can you can you can go to but people tend to focus on the parties and the fets <laughs> which, yeah. which are fun which is fun <laughs> which is fun yeah. but um i i challenge people to go to the events and and wander through and immerse themselves into what Krakowa is all about. To learn to understand that Krakowa has its, its, its foundation in, in, in its period of enslavement. It came out of the history of the Yam festivals in, from Africa. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh, what, what season does it begin? It, it starts in, um, it starts June. from July. From July, yes. So it's a lot. So the delivery of the last canes, and the last canes 
meaning that it came out of the period of enslavement when the, when the enslaved persons were allowed the one day at the end of the sugar cane harvest. harvest when the enslaved persons were allowed by the slave owner to, to celebrate the ending of the sugar cane harvest to celebrate the ending of the sugar cane harvest then they were allowed to have drink and, 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 and food and to celebrate at the at the urging of the sugar cane master, the, the slave master to celebrate that mm -hmm. delivery of the last cane on the on the, going to the um going to the sugar cane um, mill. I, I think that is why Sharon that for me. Yes. The the that is why crop over is a celebration of freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and that is why we keep it within the context of emancipation. Yes. Because it was birth out of emancipation. Mm -hmm. So that jumping on the street that could not happen if mm -hmm. 1838 didn't happen. Correct. Mm -hmm. It could not happen if the people that fight and persevere over time to come to 1838 to, for that marker that is the freedom and emancipation. If all of that never happened, the celebration we see today would not be. Mm -hmm. That celebration on the street we see today, the winding on the streets, the parties, the fats, whatever we do to signify August the 1st is that celebration is an act of freedom. And it was an act of resilience and an act of resistance yes, correct. that brought us to this day. And I think that's one thing that we always must remember. Every time we go down that street and put on that costume, there's a celebration of freedom. There's a reminder of them who went before, to fight the battle that died that sacrificed themselves in their lives, lost their families, lost themselves, lost the culture, lost their existence for me to be here today. And, you know, it would be selfish of me to pretend that we can't remember, exactly. to pretend that we can't pay honor, to pretend that we can't pay homage to these people. Correct. It would be selfish of me to just go out there, mm -hmm. and put on them costumes, mm -hmm. and to forget. Yeah. Yes. Forget. Because I always say to people, when your grandmother died, and when your mother died, you don't forget though. You just go back the next thing you scare flowers to the grave. Correct. And you spring that you could remember. You can remember them because it was just last year. Yeah. So why you can't remember them because it's a hundred or two hundred years ago, it's still family. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's still, still we family. family. Yeah. We wouldn't behave then wasn't there. Exactly. Exactly. We weren't born. So we can't we remiss of being selfish. If we play, we can't remember. Hence, it's not a carnival. It's a celebration of freedom. Exactly. Yes. It's me. a celebration of freedom. freedom. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So, you mentioned something. Uh, so, it starts like they reenact like the sugar cane. Yes, the first day. The, oh. the, 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 so, the, it always starts with the, the delivery, delivery of the last, last cane. So, what happens during that time? Yes, we have a reenactment of the delivery of the last cane on the uh -huh. first day. Oh, yes. okay. So that, that's why I kept asking you when you're coming. I, I, I wanted you I, to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next year. Next year. <laughs> next, yes. year. Yes. next year. Next year. Next year. Yes. Yeah, and uh, what about uh, on the last day, the cardument? Yes. I hope I'm pronouncing it. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the cardument. Yes. Uh, well, a lot of people have reservations about how people are, like why people dress like that. So it's people out in the streets. Yes, you that, know. Is, that is a celebration. Yeah, yeah. But I, I get, I get that a lot, especially some people who watch. They'll be like, why is everybody dressed like that? That's no, that's lack of culture. I think, yeah. I, th yeah. I think you're what you what you are witnessing, two things, right? One is the clash, which is inevitable between. Mm -hmm. Capitalism yeah. and culture, yeah. Yeah. and then there's also a generational clash, yeah. which you will, which you will have, because depending on who you speak to, yeah. people will have a problem with how people dress on the road or how people even behave on the road, and for others, it's just not. No. It's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. not. Yeah. And so we, 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 the persons involved in culture must be open-minded enough to recognize where you find the common ground. And what is the common ground? I think Rodney mentioned it. Yeah. The resistance. Remember, these people who open on these costumes, they are also resisting 
the idea from a, the from a British <laughs> thing, traditional thing yeah. of what is allowed for you. Yeah. Or what I, as a person in, in, in Britain, decide is good or bad. Yeah. So even within that itself is resistant, mm -hmm. right? So you, and, and again, um, if, if you look at, I know people talk a lot about people drinking and, and, and carrying out and all this hard stuff, but again, we are working on something called the story of sugar and rum. Mm -hmm. People of African descent are foremost in the story of sugar and rum. We had to cut the canes. Mm -hmm. We had to help in the windmills. <laughs> we had to help even in terms of showing people how to ferment certain things. A lot of it people don't want to talk about as if, you know, our only contribution was as slaves. Yeah. But there's a lot more in terms of technology, planting certain things and stuff. There's a lot of technology mm -hmm. and agricultural things that came with, came with those people. Remember, the people who came to the Caribbean, they were not slaves. They were enslaved. Yeah, they were and slaves. we have to change the language because once you keep saying that they were slaves, it gives everybody the license to believe that they, like slaves. you said earlier, they had no culture, yeah, exactly. they had no education, right. they could not contribute anything out of it. They were always slaves from the time they were a thing to come down. That's not so. You're talking about people who were kings, who were queens, who were lawyers, who were scientists, who were mathematicians, who were teachers, who were poets, who were all lawyers, who were all sorts of different things in their land. That's Making right. their own rules, doing their own thing, living their own lives. And you take them out of it, bring them into this place, and force them into labor. So imagine... Capitalism again. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine a king or a queen removed from their status to be working in the ground. For people beaten. who 99.99% of the time had less than they did. That's true. Mm -hmm. Or less intelligent, intellectually <laughs> less. Yeah. So, do, I don't have brute force. Exactly. <laughs> by pure brute force. Brute force. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? So, we have, people have to, have to get serious about these conversations. Yeah. Because oftentimes, the narrative makes it out as if, you know, we, 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 were, we were there in Africa with, with no knowledge of nothing. Of, with nothing. No mm -hmm. knowledge of anything. I, and yeah. idly, then, idling around. Yeah, <laughs> idling around, right? <laughs> Just right? existing. Just existing. And then all of a sudden, someone had to come and, and, save, and, discover, and save, save us. Save and us. Yes. Discover and us and save us. Save us, yeah. Save us. I mean, this is the epitome of madness. Yeah. It is the epitome of madness. In fact, it is so mad that it... it, it, it sometimes makes me shudder about the world we live in because people actually believe that yeah. there are people all over the world not just in europe all over the world who have been brainwashed by this particular narrative who actually believe this is why in today's world you have people still making comments like gentlemen in the states a few months ago Black jobs. We need, well, you we get jobs. that, but this one was, we need to recolonize some of the African countries. He didn't even say some, he said Africa. We need to recolonize them for their own good. Really? Yes. This is the kind of, this is the kind of thing that we are fighting on a daily basis. Because that group of people are very powerful. That's how they think. These are the people who make all the weapons and everything, you know, these are the war mongers. And this is how they think. And if people in Africa or people in the diaspora believe that they are not planning for you again, mm. you'll be sadly mistaken. And this is why we have all the confusion that we have because it's all about what? Resources. Wealth. Wealth. So therefore, if I can dehumanize you, it makes it easier for me to treat you Conquest. any way I Conquest. want to treat any way I want to treat you because yes. what? You're not contributing anything. 
So therefore, you're useless. Yeah. And we have to fight these narratives whenever they raise their heads. But you cannot do it. I go back to my thing. You cannot do it alone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is part of the reparations movement in, 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 in Barbados and the Caribbean, right? Yeah. Now, we can speak about reparations down here until the cold jump. The, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cold jump over the moon. This was the thing that they taught us in school, right? The cold jump over the moon. We can speak about reparations and the cold jumps over the moon unless we have the support of the African continent. Yeah. The numbers. And the indigenous people in other areas who suffer the same types of effects. This conversation is Amen. going to be fashioned as, oh, this is something that happened years ago. Why should we? Why? Why should we have to? Why should we, the offspring who have had anything to do with it, why would we have to, 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 to bear the brunt of all of that? It happened so many years ago, right? And this is, the, and again, it go back to the same thing again. It's about the strength in numbers. Yeah. Because if the continent does not get involved in this reparations conversation. This Caribbean is minute on the global scale yeah. in terms of its population, in terms of its voice, and in terms of everything else that you can think of, even as a, as a consumer group. Yeah, it's especially minute. In, terms, in terms of trade. Right. I mean, it is small. We have to right. stop looking right. to, so, to Europe and America as trading partners. Of Why? I mean... We've exhausted, to my mind, we've exhausted that. More than exhausted, we, we, right? We, we right. need to start looking to the African continent. We need new markets. We need new markets. As, as trading partners. Right. So it's important that the African, the continent of Africa, recognizes its importance in preserving the Caribbean region and its diaspora. Okay. It is very important. And all of it's almost twelve o'clock. And all more and all of Africa. Not just not just the West Coast. All, all of, of Africa. Africa. Greetings, good people, and welcome to Barbados. I'm in Bridgetown. Oh my goodness, it's a very, very sunny day. This feels cool. <laughs> it's a very sunny day and today I'm at a place they call the Queen's Park. I'm going to be meeting with a friend and we are also going to see some exhibition around here. We're going to learn more about, you know, the culture, the people. One of the things that I love about traveling is meeting with the locals, interacting, learning the culture, you know, just trying to understand the way of life of a given people. So here we are, the people of Barbados are called Bejans. So we're going to be learning more about the Bejan culture, the people, and you know, just exploring Queen's Park. So come with me and let's do this. And in case this is your first time here, my name is African Tigress. I'm a content creator from Kenya in Africa traveling around the world but you know what happened I came to the Caribbean and I fell in love with the Caribbean and since last year December I've been in this region the first country I visited was Barbados and guess who's back in Barbados again anyway let's get right into today's video let's do this here we go hello hello, hello. who do we have here ah. Winston Farrell. Who is Winston Farrell? Winston Farrell. Who is Winston Farrell? Winston Farrell. Most people know you as when I say if I'm going to meet Winston, I don't need to say Farrell. Uh, when I say I'm meeting Winston, because someone said I'm, I told somebody I'm meeting Winston, they were like, oh, the poet. The poet. Yeah. The poet, yes. So you are the poet. I'm um, the poet and the um, theater practitioner. Okay. Yes. All right. So, uh, what's this area? So, right now we are in what they call Queen's Park. Yeah? This is our Queen's Park. Which queen? African tigress. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. African tigress. This is one of the legacies of the British colonial, um, our British colonial existence here yeah. in Barbados. This was once the, um, the house for one of those colonial people back in the day. 
Oh, really? Queen's Park House. It was called at one point. So someone lived here. Yeah. A queen lived here. Not a queen, but uh, maybe uh, one of the royals. Or somebody used to live in this Queen's Park house. Okay. And um, so now it's it's been a theater for quite a while. Yeah. Um, we've gone through our um, republic republican status. Yeah. But we have still kept Queen's Park. Oh. And the Queen's Park theater. So you're a theatre practitioner, so you've been... This yeah, is... we've done a lot of work in this space. Oh, okay. Uh, we gone through its second remodel, uh -huh. I think. Yeah? Um, it's really a nice little theatre. Oh, really. Right. Really All right. Nice little theatre. And below, yeah. you have the steel shed, which is also a performance space. Which one? This building below. Oh, there. that one over there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we can take a little stroll down there. Okay. But this is also a performance space. Yeah. Uh, the difference between the two is that one, you can say, was the, the colonial house to the colonial master. And this, at some point in time, was kind of like a stable. For the horses? For the horses. Um, but then over the years, it's been remodeled, and it was a very important space for ordinary working class people. Okay. Um, so when Marcus Garvey came to Barbados, here is where he met and had his meetings oh. in, in the Queen's Park stables. Um, Grant Lee Adams, um, political party of the day back in the, the late 50s. Mm -hmm. They would have had their meetings At here. At Queen's Park. So, um, this can be considered the, the people's space, um, ordinary folk. Okay. So it's been renovated a couple of times. Um, so there's a stage in there, there are dressing rooms in there. Uh -huh. And um, it is a performance venue. Yeah. Not a great one in terms of I mean, sound and, and it's so hot in there at times, but it is, it is. It is being remodeled and um, it is now uh, performance space. So you have the, what was used to be the Civic Theater, which is now the Queen's Park Theater, um, above. Mm -hmm. And you have the stables of the Queen's Park Steel Shed. There's a monument right here. Barbados um, Landship. Right, so the Barbados Landship, again, is another important institution in Barbados. Um, this was erected in the memory of, of um, to commemorate the 150th anniversary of, of the Barbados Landship. Barbados Landship is one of the oldest cultural forms on the island. Okay. And um, this was erected for their 50th anniversary. Oh. Um, what can we say about the Landship is it is an institution, um, institution that we're trying to keep alive in Barbados. Um, what is a land ship? The land ship is what we might say a ship on a ship on land, uh, kind of oh, an oxymoron. A, really. a ship on land. That's <laughs> yes. what I was wondering. Yeah. Yes. Um, and this was started um, in 1863 oh. by a man called Moses Wood. Okay. Uh, and say that most of these guys were members of the Royal British um, Navy in mm -hmm. terms of working. Uh, when they came came off the ship and they landed here, they uh -huh. decided to reenact the the um, the stuff that they would have been doing on the on the vessels in terms of the drills oh. on land. Okay. But it's really it's really a real African influence mm -hmm. memory of the transatlantic slave um, trip um, where where you have people trying to reenact that whole crossing, that whole journey. Okay. From Africa to the Caribbean. Um, the most important thing about the landship was that it was um, 
an organization that serves its, its members, its ordinary people, in terms of being there, in terms of financial assistance. Um, so it was kind of like our first credit union, if you want to put it like that. Ah, oh, okay. Um, and the whole idea of the drills and um, maneuvers that they would display um, to communities. And each, each landship had its own dock, mm -hmm. or had its own dock, which was a space where members would meet and rehearse and carry their meetings, etc. All right. So landship was, and is, still a very important cultural institution in Barbados. All right. I would love to see the exhibition in here. Yeah, we can Are they it. open? They're, they're putting it up right now. They're, they're putting it out? They're putting it up. It's not fully up and open, but we can go in. Oh, okay, cool. Let me get my phone. Let me grab my phone. Yeah. All right, so now let's see the Queen's Park House. Queen's Park Gallery. Uh, uh, yeah. Hola, Manuel. Hola, Manuel. Hola. 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 But she's not going to be here when it opens. Oh, so it's going to be opened later. By weekend, right? Tomorrow. Oh. She's leaving tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow. This is the same exhibition that has, um, but it has a piece up with, um, what's her name? Uh, Anne? Anne, Anne Raga has a piece in this. Yeah. yeah. This is the one this one right here. This is the volleyball? Yeah. That, Based on one of my phones? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Ah, I see. This is where it's based on. Hello. I just read it. Yeah, huh? I just read it. You just read it? Yeah. Scopus is doing this piece based on one of my phones. Yes. Shipwreck. Is this shipwreck the one that's. Mm, well, shipwreck. I did go to a shipwreck when I went, when yeah, I took a boat. There are quite a number of them around. Oh, so there's a lot of ships that... Sh there were some that were on two shipwrecks, but then there are a couple of ships that were actually sunk. Oh. To create. To, you know. But yeah, it's an old poem. I, I am the land, the rock of is the, is this Coral Caves. This one up here, but this is interesting as well. Yeah, very interesting. Okay. So if you're gonna be in Barbados over the weekend, yes, this is, this is where you wanna be. Open, yeah. The crop of uh, exhibition. This is the second one, right? Yeah, come on, uh, the last one you mix in with this one. Because this was in the last one. It's some of the Oh, they have a collected these there. Yeah. Uh, some of it is from the last one, some of it is from the last one. But then it's pretty, pretty short, it's only just about a week. Oh, that's... Engineers, yeah. They the have, land trip. Yeah. They have the engine. The engine is made up of the drummers. Oh, Kill them, I see pilot, I see NRs. So it's like people who work in class, kind of? Yeah, yeah. Poor work. So do they dance? Oh, yeah. When we talk about maneuvers, that's what we're talking about, the dancing. Is it May? There's, you have another dance called May? Ma Maypole, yes. Is it the same? Yeah, they do the Maypole. Yeah. As well as the other routines. I would love to see the Maypole at some point. All right, so that's the exhibition they're setting up. But unfortunately, it's not yet, it's not yet set. It opens this weekend. Yeah. And the theatre is upstairs and it's closed. Yes, I. Yeah, yeah, family. All is well. 
the representation of the steel pans, just like in Trinidad. Yes, this is, um, I guess this display was on as part of the Exhibition? decoration for, for the park. Oh. After the latest renovation, oh. um, with some signage and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this seemed to be a, a, a pan motif. Yeah, pan, right? Yeah, still pan. Oh, have you noticed those two look like eyes? Yes. Those two look like eyes. Yeah, so it's a, a pan motif uh, with some other stuff going on. Yeah, in terms of the. The eye, the eye, the eye. Uh, yeah. Irie. All right, I, I don't know. See any, any writing on them to tell me what it what is. It's installation, yeah. installation yeah. art. That's what they call it, installation art. Yeah. yeah. So I know you. First, I'm gonna ask you some few questions about just living here in Barbados as well as i know you i poet so you're going to perform for us like 100 poems <laughs> well you know <laughs> give us one first give us one give us one about barbados first. give you a poem about, about barbados I, I, I am there's a poem that i used to do very uh, very long time ago yeah I, I still do it it is a poem it's called busman Busman, like B U S M. Okay. The busman. Okay. And it was inspired by my use of public transport years ago, right? Uh huh. It goes like every morning, them waiting by the bus stop, them talking about the busman. Hey, eh, eh, the bus busman. Eh, 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 the school children and workers, baskets of hawkers waiting, busman. Eh? Eh. Hey. The bus man. Hey. Hey. I say bus man. Hey. Must be fun man. Driving them bus man. In them street man. Hey. Hey. Packing down in them corners. Uh -huh. Wheeling around them dents. Sailing through them cars and things. Hear the engine sing in the bus man. Hey. hey. Must be fun man. Hey. Must be panic man. In the bus man, eh? Hey. Hey, the, the bus, bus man, man. Hey. 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 The bus man, eh? Eh? Hey. 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 So that's a verse and a chorus of uh -huh. the very popular bit in what we call rhythm poetry. Oh, rhythm poet poetry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that is that's the nature of my work um, to create work that is, you know part of the environment based uh, on what you see every morning you see the bus man uh, you know what I mean? and I myself used to spend a lot of time uh -huh. traveling using the bus system so, okay uh, all right so those are two, that's a popular piece mm -hmm. one of my popular pieces so you told me you've been to Africa before Yes, I've been to Africa before. I was in Ghana in 2000. Yeah. And I was in Kenya. 2000? Yeah. And 2000? That's like... 20 something years ago. 24? 24 years ago, yes. Well, what, what, what inspired you to go to Ghana that... Uh, you know, during that time... Okay, I, 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 I might not be sure. I mean, I don't know. Was there like... I feel like right now most people are like Ghana, Ghana, especially after they did the year of return. Right. So what made you go to Ghana in the year 2000? Was that the first African country you visited? It was the first African country that I had visited. Yeah. And, um, again, it had to do with the barbados Ghanaian connection. Yeah. Um, during that time, we had just had the um, Commission for Pan-African Affairs in Barbados. Yeah. And sure. um, we were trying to, trying to make connection mm -hmm. to, to, um, to Ghana. Yeah. Um, so it was a great opportunity to go and see and feel um, Ghana. Um, I enjoyed it immensely. Um, we were in Accra, mm -hmm. we were in Cape Coast, and we were somewhere up up a Volta. Okay. So it gave me the opportunity to at least feel 
those three different parts. Yeah. Um, I had a good rapport with with a number of, of people, and they all were happy to to welcome me home. You know what I mean? How did that make you feel, like stepping into Africa for the very first oh, time? Oh yeah, it was. You know, it wasn't easy. It was so easy to take us out of Africa, but it's so hard for us to go back home. I mean, we left Barbados when we got to when we got to um, to London. Yeah. We had we had problems with the connecting flight. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it all worked out. We finally got to um, we finally got to to uh, Accra. Yeah. And um, we had a great time. Okay. So I need to go back. Since then, I was, yeah, I was in Leeds because I spent a year in Leeds uh -huh. at um, University of Leeds. Yeah. And um, whilst I was there, I, I, met, I met a lot of Ghanaian friends. Mm -hmm. We were in, in, in school together, in uni together. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have reasons to really go back to Ghana. But since then, um, I was in Kenya last year. Oh. Yeah. And why Kenya? Why Kenya? Yes. Um, <laughs> because it was East Africa, because it was a poetry festival that I had an interest and an invitation to. Yeah. So I was able to, to finally uh -huh. to get there because of the pandemic and all those years before. Um, I wasn't doing any traveling, so last year, September, we you went to Kenya. We went to Kenya, and oh. it was it was it was a very short trip. How uh, many days were you in Kenya? <laughs> Don't tell I, me. I was, it was so short. I'm embarrassed to say. Oh, okay, I, mean, I, mean, it, I was I spent five days technically. That's okay. Because um, the other two days were like traveling to get there and to get back. Uh -huh. So. Technically, I spent five intense days. Uh huh. Nairobi. Nairobi. Well, I spent I spent only hours in Nairobi because I went and I spent the night in Nairobi, yeah. and then the next day took took us almost nearly a whole day to get from Nairobi to Kisi. That's quite far. Yeah, it is. Yes. Six hours. Six seven hours. Six seven hours. hours yeah. Yes. Um, and we spent most of the time in Kisi. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so those, most of those five days were spent in Kisi. Um, climaxing with a safari. Masai Mara? Uh, Masai Mara, yes. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's a lot to do in three days. Yeah, oh that my goodness, it. that's a lot. Uh, okay. You did what some people would take a week to do. So it was four days, four days, and, and um, doing the poetry recitals and interaction with the secondary school and with the university at Kisi. Yeah. Um, and with a community, uh -huh. and then the last day was was out on the safari, uh -huh. and, and from the safari I headed straight to the airport. So you can imagine how oh, it was. I'm sure you slept all through the the flight back. Well, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Bear in mind, I didn't sleep the night before the safari because oh my I, we had to be moving like five o'clock in the morning, Dang. four or four o'clock in the morning. So it was really, so this time I'm going for a longer period. When are you going? I'm, I'm technically supposed to be leaving around the 19th of September. So for how long are you going to be in Kenya? I'm trying to at least do three weeks this time. Oh, that's a lot. That's, it's not too much. It's not a lot, but it's sufficient. Yeah, yeah. It's sufficient. I do a week with the uh, embassy. I do a week with the festival and then I spend a couple of days. You should go. I know you got be you got sun, sea, and sand, but you also got sun, sea, and sand at the coast of Kenya. You should go and see our sun, sea, and sand as well. <laughs> that is a, um, what's the section? Is I plan the to coast go. of Kenya, Mombasa. Mombasa. Yeah. I I I will see what how far I can get around, but I also wanted to to visit Nairobi. Uh, well, I'll be in Nairobi, um, but I wanted to to visit one or two other um, areas. Um, uh -huh. And also want to go like Victoria. Like from Victoria. The lake, the lake area. Okay, from lake. Kisi to Kisumu is two hours drive. So mm. from Kisi you can go straight to Kisumu, and then from Kisumu you don't have to take the road. You can take the a flight. 
back to Nairobi or even to Mombasa straight. There's flights like that. And it's cheaper to fly there compared to here. It's yeah. cheaper to fly. I, I, it's I, like $50 USD. 100 Bajan from Kisumu to Nairobi. If you're on road, it's gonna take you eight hours. Yeah. It's a nice, 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 beautiful place. Nice public park. Is this place called G um, Jesus what? Jesus. Fort Jesus. Fort Jesus. That's in Mombasa. That's in Mombasa. Yeah. And that's to the north or that's to the south? That's uh. No, east, east. Southeast, southeast of Kenya, that's the end of Kenya. Next to it is the ocean. Next to it, it would be Asian countries. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. Is this park free for everybody? Can I come and have my events here or I need to? Yeah, the park is free. You can, you can come and you can Photo park. shoot, Photo picnics, shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. free. There's, there's, no, there's no car, really. Unless you are having a kind of like a, a wedding or something. Yeah, like a big shopping. event. Yeah. But I can have a picnic with my friends, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely can come. I mean, it's a small part when you when you really think about it. Um, what parts are like. But um, here here we have the cricket field. Oh, this is where they play cricket. You I was can wondering. play cricket on this. The pitch is covered right now. Yeah. Um, so you have, you have. Is this, this where field? is this the main cricket field for here? Is this where they played the game? No, no. Oh. This is um, I think this is just one of the um, train practicing this is Spartan ground. So you have oh. a number of cricket clubs. Ah. So um, this would be one of the clubs. Um, the field I think it's, it's Spartan. Yeah. Cricket club. Let me in the park. Um, and then, like when the schools are, some schools have in their their um, athletics. Yeah, it's they, a nice they, place they, to they'll, they'll, run around. They will, they will. Four hundred meters or two hundred. It's too over sh over there. That blue building over there is also an important space. That's the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. The Queen Elizabeth. The, the blue one. That's the yeah. Queen Elizabeth Hospital. That's there. Yeah, that's part of the our is, main hospital. Oh, is it the main one? Yes. The, the biggest hospital? Yeah, that's our main hospital, Queen Elizabeth. Ah. Again, named after the Queen. Okay. <laughs> they should change it to Queen Tigress. <laughs> yeah. Or Queen Nefertiti. Uh, Queen Nefertiti. Yeah. Okay. And the building straight ahead over here um, is our Ministry of Education. Our Ministry of Education. So you're surrounded by some interesting spaces. So I'm at the center of, yeah. like more like surrounded by. Yeah, just on the outskirts of Bridgetown. Oh. Just uh. on the out. Bridgetown is just five minutes walk down. Oh. Down there. Okay. The main city. And the biggest one. Um. Yes. Oh, Space Town. Space Town. You've been Hull to. Town? You've been to. Space Town and Hull Town. Space Town and Hull Town. Which one you want to hear? The, the one for you said for Kissy. For Kissy. Yeah, you said you made I a gotta poem. Read that off of my you gotta read that one. Okay. I gotta read that. Yeah, but I'm also. But what inspired you to get into poetry? Yeah. I started writing from very young. Yeah. At primary when I was like at primary school. Mm-hmm. I had a friend, a classmate, mm -hmm. who came to school one day. And he said, I just wrote two poems last night. Mm -hmm. And um, he read the poems out to the class. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm going to go home and I'm going to write two poems. Yeah. So I went home and I wrote two poems. <laughs> I came back and I read them to the class the next day. Uh -huh. And I was writing poetry ever since then. And they loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it was actually... There's a part of one of the poems that I still use up to today. Really? From all those years. There's a part of um, this poem. Rip we way from we land. Make we walk for white man. Rip we way from the civilization. Make we walk upon a damn plantation. African, you better know yourself. I said, African, you better know yourself. 
Put him in Barbados, him a Bajan. Put him in Jamaica, him Jamaican. Put him in a England, him a Englishman. Put him in America. God damn Yankee man, African, you're back. <laughs> hey, I said, free up yourself, brother African. Hey. Free up yourself now. Hey. 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 Free up yourself, brother African. Hey. Free up yourself now. Hey, hey. I said, Africa, you better know yourself. Hey, I said, Africa, you better know yourself. Self, 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 self. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so pieces of that was part of my was early stuff. your first poem, part of your first poem you ever wrote. Yeah, I remember, remember that clearly because, you know, we started, we started with, like doing rhymes and stuff. So. Uh -huh. Okay, so there's the poem that I wrote for Kissy. When you're in Kenya, so when all the Kisi people, this is your poem. I remember Kisi. The day the rain fell, showered blessings on Kisi. The land rejoiced. Green are the hills of Kisi, the red clay mists of Kisi. And after the rains, the odor of her body rises to the street. Resilient lies Kissy, broad are the backs in Kissy. We came like pilgrims with our poems and word songs to your open hearts, bearing offerings to Kissy, falling in love with Kissy. Ooh, that's Ooh, it. That's a very short poem. It's a very short poem but expresses the little time that you spend there 